Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast, where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, we are going to talk about the power of setting clear sleep signals. So let's start off with explaining what a sleep signal is because actually the title is a little bit misleading. It's not only a sleep signal, but it's also a wake up signal. Basically what we are doing is aligning our biorhythm to the circadian rhythm, which is the day night cycle. We probably all heard about the biorhythm at some point in our life. And I assume that we all have a certain understanding of what this means. So I'm going to just wrap this up very quickly. Uh, Basically, the biorhythm describes the process that our bodies run through over the course of 24 hours. So at certain times, we will be asleep, hopefully. At other times, we will be awake. At other times, we will be able to peak perform and um, we will get hungry. All of this stuff is related to the biorhythm. And the circadian rhythm, again, describes how this biorhythm is hooked together to the day-nighttime cycle. So at daytime, the sun rises, we tend to get up, so there is a connection between us being awake, our biorhythm telling us that it's time to get up, and the sunshine, the circadian rhythm, and there is a connection to when the sun goes down and we get tired and fall asleep. If we were still living in nature, in a tribe, or anything similar, then I would not see value in creating this podcast for you. But I will also say, fortunately, we developed and we got new freedom. We've got the freedom to turn the light on whenever we want to. We can turn it off whenever we want to. We can shut our windows, our doors, make it dark inside of our houses whenever we want to. We've got TV, entertainment, computers, laptops, smartphones, stuff that makes us busy. We've got colleagues that we spend a lot of time with over the course of the day, but that do not really belong to our inner tribe circle. So things have shifted and the sleep signals kind of got out of control. And today I'm going to share a couple of tools with you how we can sharpen and empower these sleep signals to get them very, very strong And this one can be very important for you if you have a broken sleep schedule, if it takes long times for you to fall asleep, or if you're just not getting the high quality sleep that you deserve to have. This is true for many of us. And if this is true for you too, I've got good news because there are ways that we can strengthen these sleep signals and we're gonna walk through them today. But before we get started, you should know how much sleep you plan to get, how much sleep you really need. So uh, that is a number that you should have in advance. And you should also know if you are an early riser, somebody who goes to bed early and gets up early, or if you are an owl, somebody who tends to stay up longer hours till midnight or 1 a.m. and uh, likes to sleep in a little bit. Because these are things that are super important Uh, The first thing I want you to do is actually to write down an ideal scenario, your sleep schedule as you wish to have it in future. So let's say for uh, an average person, this would be to go to bed at, let's for the sake of ease, let's say he or she is going to go to bed at 10 p.m. and is going to wake up at 6 a.m. Okay, just for this example, that's an eight hour sleep schedule. And with that, we're going to work in the examples to follow. The first sleep signal that we are going to strengthen is the wake up sleep signal. And the reason is very simple. You can 100% control when you wake up. You cannot 100% control when you fall asleep and you shouldn't. Sleep will take care of itself. And we're going to walk through that in a couple of minutes. But we can 100% control when we wake up. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to wake up in the right way and then we're going to take care that we hook our biorhythm to the circadian rhythm, doing everything to signal our bodies that the day has started. So that's what we're going to do. First thing is how do we wake up? That's the very first point. Uh, I would really 
urge you to think about getting a new alarm clock if you are still working with a conventional one. What I would like you to do, or to experience at least, is how much better you will feel if you use a light-based alarm clock or a fitness tracker, an alarm clock that hooks up to our sleep cycles. I'm gonna explain that in a second. So the first option would be to have a light-based alarm clock. These alarm clocks are fantastic. What they do is basically to dim up the light slowly over the course of 15 to 30 minutes. And the lighter the light gets, the more you tend to want to wake up. And you'll do so when you're in a light sleep cycle. So this waking up will feel much more natural than if an alarm clock just shoots off the alarm that could hit you in deep sleep. Uh, and if you wake up in deep sleep, you're gonna feel groggy, tired. Oh my God, we all know how that feels. The second option would be to use a fitness tracker. This is actually the option that I'm going with at the moment. So I have got a Withings watch because these watches just have a fantastic capacity in their batteries. They last 25 days and that just suits me so much better than all the other devices that I tested before. But whatever, a fitness tracker will be able to track your sleep cycles, at least most of them can, and you should choose one that can do this. And you, when you set the alarm clock in these fitness trackers, they will wake you up when they notice that you are in a light sleep mode. So typically you give them a range, a time range in that they are allowed to wake you up and they will do so when they recognize that you're in light sleep mode. So in my example this morning, I wanted to get up at 5 a.m. So I have my alarm clock set to around 5 a.m. and it woke me up at 15 minutes to five. So I was up early, but it woke me up in light sleep mode. So it wasn't that hard to get out of bed. And this is what it's all about, getting out of bed in the right way. So. When we've got that done, we want to hook our bodies. We want to tell our bodies that the day has started. Tell our biorhythm that the circadian rhythm, that everything falls together. First off, we're going to impact, have an impact on our biorhythm. We want to get our bodies in motion. Uh, this does not mean that you have to do heavy lifting of weights or anything, but start moving your body. For me, Personally, this is to have a walk in the morning. I have a walk that is about 20, 30 minutes. And after that, my body knows that the day has started. Um, you can also do a little bit of stretching, do a couple of push-ups, do anything that suits you well in the morning without exhausting your body totally because that's not what your body is up to yet. The next thing that we want to do after we got our bodies in motion a little bit is to expose our bodies to light. For me, in summertime, this is done when I have my walk because the sun comes out quite early and I will get sunshine. And this is the most powerful light that you can get. The second best option is just to light up your kitchen, your living room, wherever you have breakfast and um, best do so by using a daytime lamp. These lamps are very light and uh, just give your body a, a bigger exposure to light in the morning. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, also good if you have um, problems with your mood in the dark times of the year, um, seasonal disorder. So that, that's a thing that is good to uh, help to lift your mood. So that's a second reason to, to get a daytime lamp but it's also good to tell your bodies that the day really has started and that way we're gonna connect the biorhythm to the circadian rhythm, which basically works light-based, light and temperature-based. That's two big important things that you can do, get in motion and expose your bodies to light. And the third tip that I've got for you is a pro tip and I know this one is not for everybody. Uh, this would be to have a cold shower in the morning exposing your body to a cold shower for three to five minutes is super painful, true, at least in the first couple of seconds. And um, it will also improve your overall health, your well-being. And when you get out of that shower, you are wide awake and your body knows that it's daytime. So this is a full package of things that you can do and choose a couple of them 
maybe do all of them to tell your body or give them a clear signal that the day has started. Let's now turn our attention to the sleep signal that we would kind of intuitively turn to and this is the sleep signal that we're going to set for nighttime. First off, before we get started, I want to repeat what I said a couple of minutes ago. Do not focus or pressure falling asleep. Sleep will come and take care of its own. We're going to take care of the frame around it and we can focus and take care of getting up in the right way. That's the thing that you can really focus and that you have 100% control. What we're going to do now is to set signals and set a strong signal to our body that our body knows that it's time to fall asleep. So at the time that we hit the bed, we're just going to be tired and then eventually we will fall asleep without us having to do anything about it. And uh, that will just feel so good. The first thing that we want to take care of is that we have dinner at least four hours before we hit the bed. So in our example, if we want to fall asleep at 10 p.m., then we want to be finished with our dinner at 6 p.m., right? Don't get over sophisticated here. It's not about the seconds or the minutes, but as a rule of thumb, four hours before we hit the bed. The next thing that we want to take care of is going to happen two hours before we go to bed. In our example, this is 8 p.m. So at 8 p.m., we are going to expose our bodies to less light. We can do so by using the curtains and putting them in front of our windows. We can also do so by reducing the light bulbs or the intensity of the light bulbs that we are using in the house. We want to get into a darker environment. We don't have to overdo it here, so it's not about running through the dark, but Getting into a darkish kind of environment will help our bodies to understand that the sun is disappearing and that we are preparing for nighttime. You can also think about getting blue light reduced bulbs, which can add up to the positive effect here. The reason is basically that we've got little receptors in our eyes and they pick up in particular the blue light out of the light spectrum. And as long as blue light is there, they send a signal to a thing called the SCN in our brain. It's the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this is basically the trigger of our inner clock. And as long as it receives blue light, it kind of tends to know and think that it's daytime. The next step that we're going to take is going to happen one hour before we hit the bed. I think I'm going to call this the 421 rule. Um, so one hour before we go to bed, we want to reduce our exposure to electronic screens. Okay, we might not want to, but we should reduce our exposure. So no TV, no smartphones, no iPhones, no computers. Put all of that away. These devices emit blue light, and that's not good as we know now. And the other aspect, and I think that's even more important, we are kind of under constant distraction. We power up our brains with content out of the TV, out of the internet, out of you name it. And this is not good for our mental health and it's not good for our brains, which should kind of get in, uh, get a chance to get tired too. So things that we should replace this with, which would be a good alternative, could be reading, listening to music, and maybe even having a, a slow walk. You could have a bath, a warm bath is certainly a good idea. You could drink a, a cup of tea, valerian tea, uh, uh, one of my prime time drinks, absolute calming uh, effect on me. So you should replace these habits through new ones that will serve your sleep. And now it's bedtime, so we're going to go to bed. We should implement rituals that are always the same, so keep the order and which time you go to the bathroom, what you do, maybe you want to get a pyjama, which would be an additional anchor that now is bedtime, if this is comfortable for you. And when you hit the bed, do nothing else than rest. You do not have to get intimate in the kitchen with your partner now, so that's okay too. But other than that, don't start working, don't watch TV, don't do anything else in your bedroom than to rest. And also switch your phone, your smartphone into flight mode, turn notifications off. And what I always do is to flip the screen to the bottom side. So even if it would light up, which it doesn't, uh, it wouldn't affect my sleep when I'm sleeping. 
And with that, I think I'm going to bring this week's episode to a landing. That was a lot of information. So let's wrap up this week's podcast together. If you are facing a broken sleep schedule at the moment, then connecting your biorhythm with the circadian rhythm over strong sleep signals is definitely a thing you want to have a look at. You can get started easily by implementing the tools and techniques that we walked through together in this podcast. Never forget that you can control the time that you get out of bed, but you can never control the time that you fall asleep. Go to bed with the intention to relax and sleep will come on its own. And that's it for this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that you tune in next week when we are going to talk about sleep improvement means change. Until then, have a superb sleep. Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast, or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu, that's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. Everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice, as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week and until then, have a good sleep.